Good morning. Right decision yesterday just to stay out of the Champions League qualifiers. Watch them first. Now we've got a clear indicator for the second legs. It's the away side in the second leg who will have to score two goals. Similar story with Malmo. Really poor performance from Malmo, but then excellent from Sparta Prague. And a reminder that the market's... Well, I thought it was uh, shorter odds for Malmo. I think there was another team which was shorter. Yes, I was getting a mixed up with Mietland, the M's. The 1-1 one -one for Mietland. Did Slovian, Slovian Bratislava score first? If they did, that was a possible angle. And indeed they did. So you could have got involved there with that opening goal for the underdog Slovian Bratislava if you trusted the market. But it's going to be fascinating second legs. That's what I'm looking at next week, the second legs. Now we have handles in. Dinamo Kiev must win the second leg. Malmo must win the second leg. Mietland, Slovan, Bratislava. The suggestion that Mietland could come from behind gives us an angle for the second leg. If Slovan score first, <laughs> young boys will be absolutely delighted. They've been a very strange side starting the season incredibly badly. Was the red card impactful? No, it wasn't, which makes this even more impressive. Albeit, the winner was a penalty. And here comes the cat, who's obviously a big... Yeah, the cat was just saying, very impressed with the young boy's performance. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yes, totally. Yeah. But it was only a penalty, pussycat. So that's impressive. The red card did not impact the scoreline. Galatasaray, I think, at home... We'll have it in them. Oh, the cat agrees as well. Very solid Galatasaray so far in the Turkish Super League, although we've just dipped our toe in, really. So uh, both teams to score is a 100% pattern so far this season for Galatasaray. So I'd be looking at this kind of a scoreline in the second leg. I think they're going to be far more solid. And you're going to see them, I would suggest, Galatasaray at odds on. In the second leg. This is the kind of match you'd be looking at. Elsewhere yesterday. I told you to look out for Obi Odenza this season. Although there's not going to be a trade. Although you could have looked for a goal first half. They are the side to follow in the Danish first division. Obi Odenza. This is very impressive. Maybe it's this Kieran Gard. Is he the main goal scorer? Is this Frederick here? They're not too shabby. They've been scoring plenty. So this is a marker. This is the kind of pattern we'll expect. I like to latch on to certain sides every season. They change, of course. Odenza standing out in this first division. Elsewhere. Well, this was a winning trade for us yesterday. I hope you got involved. Purely by the research, because we didn't have any shots on target in the first half at all. Second half, two shots, two goals. Brilliant stuff from Gunniston. And if you read the research, you'd have been doing exactly what I was doing and looking for that profit. Now, this is the ideal scenario to be in, of course, the green screen. But prior to that green screen, we had a £5 loss on the draw once it was 1-1. Now, do you want to take that £5 loss pre-match in the hope of a £70-plus profit if Gunniston win? I think the payoff is excellent. This is the kind of configuration we've done in the past with Rotherham and Derby, and that won £120-plus in total. You can see the rewards can be very solid if you stay in. Plus one, a little bit shyer, £29. I didn't cash out the plus one. It should have done at 1-1. But all in all, pick your battles. The research was excellent, I thought. It got me confident that Kiniston would do it. So let's go back and just look through yesterday's matches. I don't know what's happened here. I've lost all of my starred matches. So we'll work our way down. This is going all Pete Tong on me. I was going to mention Sweden. Just a reminder to you, odds and goals. Anything under 1.3, you're expecting 0-3, 1-3, any other away score. 
not quite there. There, look, oh. there. Wins to nil, don't forget. 5 nil, 7 nil, 9 nil, 3 1. But we had other side scoring which scuppered the correct score play. My ideal for a correct score play is a win to nil because then you've only got a limited number of score lines to choose from. But as you can see, the relationship between odds and goals is quite clear. And uh, I know someone like Enoch's been looking at over two and a half goals. That's an angle in pre-match research. Pussycat agrees as well. Yeah. I've just fed you. Okay. Europa League qualifiers today. It's a lot more robust coupon today. You know how I don't like first leg qualifiers. It's the second leg where we'll get the handle in and we'll see whether the market got it right. Okay. So we've got the Europa League qualifiers. Yeah. And the cat thinks, what do you, what do you think about Ferenc Faros? Yeah. So we've got uh, a few odds on favourites today. Got a few familiar names. Maccabi Tel Aviv should be defensively sound. Paulson from the Czech Republic should be competitive today, particularly against Hearts. We're going to look at Kilmarnock as well in the Europa Conference League. These Scottish sides shouldn't really land a blow. So that's the initial ones. I will be up and around for the early kickoffs, that's for sure. I like a big coupon. Compare that with only four matches at 2 a.m. my time. Uh -uh. As Les Dennis would say, I'm not going to get involved. English League 2 today. It's very little for us to work off, isn't there? But I've done a little bit of uh, research for you. Notts County, odds on favourites. So far, in League 2, a nil-nil draw and a 2-2 draw for Notts County. So they're getting a little bit desperate. They could do with a win. Uh, Grimsby Town lost 1-0 against Fleetwood away and beat Cheltenham 3-2 at home. So very little for us to work off. I don't know if there's any head-to-heads. 5-5 five, five, the last time these two met. 3-2 before that. You're going to go for over four and a half goals today? We will see. Really competitive. Last two head-to-heads. Fantastic stuff. I would be laying a late draw here, given Notts County about two consecutive draws. Be looking. I think they'd be looking as well for that to end positively. Europa League, Conference League qualifiers. Again, similar story. First legs today. Lots and lots of familiar names. Let's hear Warsaw. Brand from Norway. Djurgården, who have been pretty good in Europe so far. FC Copenhagen, as reliable as they come. I think, did they get us another trade at the weekend? They're playing Kilmarnock today. And I think Kilmarnock are going to be outdone. Remember, Copenhagen have a very good Champions League pedigree. Playing against far more accomplished sides than Kilmarnock. No offence to Killy fans. Fiorentina really should take the Hungarians to town with home advantage. So there's some good stuff this evening. Chelsea are playing Servette as well. So uh, this will be a good opportunity for Chelsea to get the first win under their belt under the new manager. I don't know why they got rid of the old manager. They ended last season incredibly strongly. But uh, that's football for you. Lance, this market is playing Panathinaikos. So I will be up and around for the early kickoffs, but as I say, it's it's in the second legs that we have our real angles. This is a fascinating fixture in the cup. Uh, two of the likely title contenders. No wonder it's two point six two the favourite. It's going to be a very tough one to unpack. So moving on down, it's just predominantly Europa League, Europa Conference League this evening. That's the dominant, and uh, I would caution you to look for Arca Gidnia. They we're a very tradable side last season. So uh, looking at the Polish first division today, just uh, tentatively in the in-play stats, see whether we can get a handle on that or not. Swedish Cup continues, and don't forget the relationship between short odds and three-plus goals. So you can try, try that out this evening. So that's it. We're getting ever nearer to the US Open as well. But certainly my focus this evening will be solidly on the tennis. Still in the qualification mode. So uh, 
Diego Schwartzman is a standout there. I don't know if these uh, qualifiers are as per the actual Grand Slam, i.e. the best of three sets for the men. I'm not too sure. Maybe a bit later on. Lucas Pui has to go through a qualifier, which is a big name for a qualifier. Quentin Hallis as well. So uh, a few familiar names. Ladies as well. Not sure of any of these lot. Don't know them too well. We've got a Thai player, Soan Kyo. I'm going to have to uh, follow her today. She's probably the best ten golf uh, tennis player in the world, really. That's uh, part of my Thai visa conditions. So I'll see you uh, a bit later on. The probable start, 6 o'clock. Looks like a uniform start time. Five o'clock. Yeah, OK. I'll be there five o'clock onwards. Uh, again, there's a good volume of matches. And when, I, when we have a larger volume of matches, we've got more to choose from, of course, so we can pick quality plays. So that's the advantage, particularly on a Saturday. You've got so many matches you can pick. You've got better quality trades and you can avoid others. This market has been suspended. So I'm looking forward to that. See you from five o'clock onwards. And if there's anything in the Polish First Division at four o'clock, I'll pass that on to you. Have a great day.